and welcome to episode 34 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I am a yarn dyer and a yarn store owner. I'm coming to you from Paper Crane Yarns, which is my little yarn shop. And today is Sunday, February 12th, 2024. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Paper Crane Yarns. And my website is here. It's www.papercraneyarns.com. <laughs> So all of the things I'm going to talk about today are linked down below in the description of this video and you can find more video podcasts or project blogs, if you will, on my channel here if you would like to. So I am primarily a knitter. Uh, of course, I'm a yarn dyer and a business owner, so that definitely plays a big role in what I have to share a lot of the time. But recently, I have picked up a new craft, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, so I've spent these past three weeks or so since I last recorded making quite a few things, um, including what I'm wearing. I have another knitted finished object to show you, and I've been quilting. Um, my new practice is cross stitch. <laughs> Um, I've also been spinning and just all kinds of stuff. So I definitely have quite a bit to show you. And as always, my goal is to be concise, but I don't want to leave anything out. And if you have questions for me, make sure to leave them below. And you can also check my Ravelry project pages for some information if you need to. The other thing I want to say up front is I have been meaning to do a giveaway since October. So um, October of 2023, I recorded Blogtober. I did a daily vlog every um, for the entire month of October, and during that month, I did a little giveaway with my friend Gabriella, kind of. So um, Gabriella of Merryweather Knitting, she's here on YouTube, and she's got patterns available on Ravelry. She recently designed a pattern called the Moon River Socks. It's a gorgeous pattern. In fact, let me grab mine. So here are the Moon River Socks. This is the version that I knit. I was a test knitter for this pattern and she was so lovely and used one of my colorways to design these socks. She used my Soleil colorway, which I have not dyed in a long time, but it is a yellow gold kind of color. And so if you look at her project page, that's what she used to design her sample. But I was so inspired by her lace motif because she did design this lace herself and her inspiration behind the socks. I was personally inspired and, and ran with it a little bit. And so I created a new colorway called Moon River. At this point, it's not new, but at the time it, it was new for this pattern. And it's one of my favorites of all time to date. It's something between a gold and green, so it's in the world of chartreuse, and I just love it. Um, this this pair is knit with my BFL nylon base, and in my opinion, the BFL base takes the Moon River colorway the best. So, long story short, back in October, during my Vlogtober, I did a little giveaway for two copies of the pattern and one skein of Moon River on BFL nylon sock. Um, there were a lot of viewers during that time, some of which were not subscribers um, or people who I think saw the announcement video where I said who won the giveaway. And so I had one person reach out to me who was the recipient of just the pattern. And so she's had her pattern. Um, I, I gave it to her right away. Uh, but the recipient, the recipient who was supposed to get this skein of Moon River as well as a copy of the pattern directly from Gabriella, they never contacted me. And it's been months at this point, four months or so. So I am doing the giveaway one more time with this video. I've been meaning to do this with everything I've recorded since October and it's just slipped my mind. So if you would like a chance to win a skein of my Moon River, a skein of my Moon River colorway, which I personally think is gorgeous. Um, leave a comment here below and say Moon River. Um, but yeah, so and I so I will say I'm only going to ship this domestically. So here in the United States, if you are a domestic, if you are in the United States, I will send you a skein of yarn. I'll send you a skein of yarn and a copy of the pattern. If you ha are international and your name happens to be drawn, you can still win, but you'll get a copy of the pattern. 
So I will announce the winner in episode 35 of my knitting podcast, which you can expect in two to three weeks. Okay, so that's the little Moon River giveaway. And now let's jump into everything I've been working on. This is the Yorkshire Tea Biscuit Brew. Um, I definitely learned about this tea from Hannah at the Corner of Craft, and it is delicious. It is a black tea that has a malty cookie kind of flavor, so that's where the biscuit comes in. This teacup is special because um, when I was having my daughter when I was pregnant, one of the baby showers that I had, my, my family on my side and my best friends, they threw it for me. And it was an Alice in Wonderland themed tea party in our garden. And so it was just, it was beautiful. Um, I actually have some, a little bit of footage in one of my earlier episodes of the little tea party. But one of the things that all the ladies did was they found a bunch of tea sets and decorated with them. And then they let me keep them afterwards. So I use this one all the time. I think it's beautiful. Okay, so my first finished object is what I'm wearing. This is the Oolong Tank by Amy Schur. And it is a gorgeous sleeveless top pattern. It's perfect for the coming spring, um, of course, the summertime. It also makes a beautiful layering piece over something long sleeve, turtleneck. Um, you can get ideas of how Amy styles it in their Ravelry project page. But I'm looking forward to all the options that I'll have with this pullover. And um, actually, I wore it all day yesterday here at the shop. And um, so today's my second day in a row wearing it, but I'm just, it's just for recording. Um, but I absolutely love this project. So the yarn that I used is this beautiful yarn right here from Long Dog Yarn. This was from her, from Brandy's um, one collection to rule them all. It was a Lord of the Rings collection. And this is the Shortcut to Mushrooms colorway, but it's much deeper than a lot of the sample photos because this base is merino silk and yak and that is a gorgeous luxurious base i wish that i could only knit with this forever <laughs> the only thing is that it is a naturally gray base because of the yak and so all the colorways are a little bit more gray toned and so this one took the dye a lot darker than this original this colorway i think originally is or like is on merino or bfl perhaps but it's beautiful and I wish you could feel it. It is very soft. It has a slight sheen because of that silk. Um, so far, it there's no pilling. I'm, I'm sure it will at some point because it is ultra soft and it has the merino, but so far so good. I really like this one a lot. Um, and as you can see, I have almost a skein left over. So I did buy two skeins of this colorway and um, it's a fingering weight, by the way. I bought two skeins knowing that I would probably only need one and some change, and that was the case. So now I have to come up with a fun idea for the leftover here. Um, I'm kind of thinking I would love to get more yarn on this base and perhaps do a fade and do a shawl or a racer back tank top or something else. Um, I think this is a beautiful fiber for warmer weather knits. Um, so I would love to maybe do another similar thing Perhaps I can do a bralette or something that would only take, you know, that would take less than one full skein for myself. So I knit the size two and I just have to rave about this pattern. Um, if you have never knit an Amy Sure pattern, they are remarkably written. So there's a lot of attention to detail when it comes to shaping and your personal fit. So I really feel like this pattern, actually, I almost felt tears when I finished it because I was able to knit a size that accommodated my upper bust and waist sizes while still um, while also accommodating my full bust size and often for me personally it's hard to find a garment pattern that actually a can accommodate all of those things without either me having to modify in some way or having to um, having to decide where I'm going to sort of compromise on the fit. So usually if it's fitted correctly around the bust, it isn't fitted correctly elsewhere. And I think you know what I mean. So this pattern is so well written. Um, I could jump for joy <laughs> over this. And the reason why it's so perfect is because she ha uh, Amy has you pick a size that 
is more based on your upper bust measurement, which I have found is usually a more flattering fit for me um, because that can differ a lot from your full bust. And for me, it's several inches. So I was able to pick the size two, which accommodated my upper bust measurement. And then I, she has, then Amy has all these instructions for bust darts and how to incorporate them so that you get the full bust size that you want while maintaining the rest of the structure and sizing of the garment, the rest of the garment. So the grading in this pattern is perfect. And so I, I went with the cup size C, which I think added three inches total to the full bust. Um, and then there's, you know, a little bit of shaping throughout. I have it tucked in right now, so it looks a little bit more fitted here, which I think is nice. And um, I will show you this a little bit more in a moment, but I just think it's really beautiful. So the only kind of modifications that I made was where I did, uh, I used the recommended smaller needle size for things like the ribbing and I think the eye cord bind off, but I did go up one needle size for the main body and that's only because my size four needle was occupied. So I went with the size five and I checked my gauge um, and I was off, but only by one stitch in four inches. So only, you know, 0.25 stitch per inch, which really wasn't a big difference. So I just went ahead with that. And so I, it probably gave me a little bit looser of a fabric, but pretty much inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. So I cannot complain. I think it's gorgeous. Um, and the other modification I made was I, I did pick up fewer stitches around the armhole. I think I had maybe 20 or 30 fewer than was recommended. Um, and initially I tried to meet that. She said, or Amy said it was like a suggested number and I couldn't really get anywhere near that number. So I, I'm, I was somewhere, I think in the nineties for my pickup versus maybe 120 something, so, something like that. And so it gave me a, a little bit smaller of uh, an armhole, but you can see there's still plenty of space. It's just not quite as roomy. And then I also did a bit of a tighter, I cord bind off on my neckline because I don't like a deep V. I wanted it to sit a little bit higher. So I think I got it just right. I'll stand up and kind of show you the detail. I love the lace. The, it's called oolong tank because this lace pattern is meant to look like oolong tea leaves, which is my favorite tea. So I, I just love this whole design. And so here you can kind of see the bus darts actually you can see where that is incorporated into the fabric to give you that extra space um, and i also think that the i think that the armhole is very nice it looks good and tailored um, i have it tucked into a pretty skirt right now so i just think it's super gorgeous. And yesterday I wore it all day with this cardigan. This is my Posy cardigan by Marcena Kolacek. And it is definitely a favorite. And I love the way that this mauve cardigan looks with this green tank top. And Posy is also one of my favorite knits to date. And I think it's actually one of the knits that I get the most questions about when people come across this project or if they see me wearing it. So I just wanted to make sure to say, this is Posy by Marcena Kolacek. I'll have it linked down below. And the yarn was a Treehouse Knits Winter Tonal from 2022 or, or like the beginning of 2023. So that's my oolong tank. And I'm absolutely going to make more of these. I think it's one of the most flattering and lovely patterns I've ever knit. I just, I want to make all of Amy Schur's designs now. This is my second one. I also did the coloring book raglan and I, I'm obsessed. I want to do more. I could see this in lots of colors and I think it fits my style perfectly. Um, plus my goal for 2024 is to knit more blouses and perhaps short sleeved 
garments because I have a million really lovely, very wooly sweaters. And that's my favorite project to knit. And, and I love to wear them so much. But I live in central Alabama. It's very hot here the majority of the year. And so I think I just really need to focus on creating more tops that I can actually wear throughout the year. Um, even in the winter, we can have, you know, 70 degree days. Like today is winter. We're in the 70s. It's beautiful. It's like a spring day. But anyway, long story short, my whole goal for this year is to knit as many blouses that I can. Um, I'm somebody who is very, very self-conscious um, dressing in this kind of top. Um, for a number of reasons, like body image issues, kind of like some embarrassment about my tattoos. Um, so it's hard for me to wear during the summertime clothes that feel good. And so I was thinking if I devote the time into making things that look beautiful and are handmade and are tailored to me in every possible way, then maybe I'll actually have an easier time this summer with getting dressed and not feeling bad about myself. <laughs> So that's enough of that. Um, I've been talking forever, but I just really love this top and I cannot recommend it more. So my next finished object is the Kutar wrap by Sari Nordland. And um, both of these patterns, this one and the Kutar, I'm pretty sure I cast on since last recording. They were both just thoughts, I think. Um, but yeah, I've gone ahead and knit my Kutar wrap. And I will put it on and show you in a moment. Um, it's already getting a bit warm here in my shop. So I figured I would just show you a little bit about the details and talk to you about the yarn. Um, this is a very beautiful wrap cardigan pattern. And the yarns that I used are Knitting for Olive. Move my necklace, it doesn't hit the microphone. This is Knitting for Olive. Um, this is their Merino and their Silk Mohair yarns held double. The merino is the fingering weight version of their wool, the merino, their merino wool. And for both color, for both yarns, I used the rose clay colorway. And it's something in between a beige and a pink. So in person, it's like from far away, it's beige, but up close, it's pink. It's I kind of wish I picked a yarn that was more pink. I, I wasn't going for beige. I wanted rosy pink. Um, but I think it comes across a little bit more beige than I was hoping, which is kind of disappointing, but it's okay. It's still gorgeous. And you know, it's, it's always good to have neutrals in your wardrobe. So my intention with knitting this and this at the same time was I planned on wearing these two together. Although I have found since that I actually really like my posy with this top more so than I do this. Um, it's just, I grew up in an army household and um, this is giving me army vibes, <laughs> uh, which, you know, just the color combination. It's just kind of what I remember growing up with, was seeing a lot of these combos. So I like maybe a little bit more of the pink. I think this is a little bit more feminine, which is my personal style. Um, but regardless, I do very much love this wrap. And it's a gorgeous top. If you've got it wrapped and closed up, it's a gorgeous top just by itself with like a, a nice little camisole underneath. And you compare it with a skirt or, uh, you know, some kind of um, slacks. That makes me sound like a grandpa, but I'm trying to think of another word like trousers. You compare it with trousers or jeans. It's very cute. Um, but I've been wearing it a lot as an open cardigan as well, which is a little bit trickier only because the ties are very long. So I kind of found a solution for that and I will show you. Um, I. Pretty sure I used the recommended needle size for this pattern and I got gauge exactly. Um, it helps, you know, if, to use the yarn that the designer used for their sample. I, I find it's a little bit easier to get gauge and this is what she used. Um, so you can see it's very pretty. I love this lace on lace. That's, I just, I love lace. Um, so it, it is very lovely and I definitely am not complaining about the color. It is very pretty. It's just not as pink as I was wanting. Um, but let me kind of stand up and show you the overall fit. So the lace, the lace panel is 
um, only on the front of the fabric. It doesn't go all the way around, but I like that. I think that's exactly right for this design. And the sleeves I really loved because they are, they're like a set in sleeve, but it's not the kind where you seam your sleeve into the shoulder. Um, this is the kind where you actually do short rows here at the sleeve cap to sort of build up that fabric. Um, and that gives it that set in sleeve look. So it was very simple, very fast, um, not laborious, no seaming, very nice. So I love this the sleeve fit. I have a little bit of positive ease here. I actually got the length perfect. I didn't um I didn't get impatient and make them, you know, an inch too short like I feel like I usually do. So it's very pretty. Um I think the fabric is gorgeous. This is like velvet. It's extremely soft and like squishy and comfortable. So I love this yarn combo um for yardage. And I knit the size 2, I believe, for this one. I used all of my silk mohair, I think, or I think okay, I think I used three and a half of the silk mohair balls, and I believe they come as 25 grams. So about 75 grams or a little bit more, I think, of the silk mohair. And then I used exactly three skeins of the merino, and I purchased four, so I've got one left over that's untouched. Um, and then I had little scraps, you know, but overall, this was not a very cost. This wasn't a very expensive project. Um, I didn't need a lot of the material to make this. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. It was a very easy construction. I actually think that this would be a fantastic, maybe second sweater uh, for a new knitter. I think it's really nice. It's well done. It's well written, um, very easy to follow. No complaints there. And then for the ties at the end, you actually knit these long lengths of I cord and I've had mine knotted to shorten it so that I could wear it open and not having it uh, dragged down by my feet because it is very long. I actually thought that knitting the I cord was going to take 10 years, but they both took maybe 20 minutes or so. And one of them is longer than the other, but they were, they were very fast. And that was the last step that I did. Um, I was glad that that part went kind of quickly. So that's the full length of this I cord. And then this one's shorter. That's the only part that requires a little bit of seaming. You just kind of sew those on into the sides. You can kind of adjust where you want your ties to be placed on the body. So I kind of, I, I followed mine to Sari's suggestion, which puts it right around my bust. Um, but you could make it lower if you wanted to. I saw some of the people who knit this mentioned lowering it. I just kept it where she said. And then another component of the design is you actually knit a little hole into the fabric. And I wore this last night and my husband saw the hole and he kind of freaked out. <laughs> but I told him that's on purpose. And it's because since this is a wrap, this took me 10 years to figure out how to actually tie it on. It was really confusing, which is kind of embarrassing, but now I have it figured out. You run the eye cord through this little hole here, and you bring this through and around the back, and then you bring it to the front, and there you go. So you can just tie it that way. What was confusing to me was I couldn't find, I couldn't find any photos of the back of this wrap. Like, sorry, didn't have any sample photos that I could find. None of the test knitters seem to have any photos of the back and so I could only see it from the front and the side and I thought that the tie didn't go around the back but I'm here to tell you that it does <laughs> so it goes around like that and then that's how it ties in the front and again it ties like kind of mine ties right underneath my bust I kind of lower it a little bit or you could bring it up um, I did knit my eye cord slightly longer than was suggested kind of just because I got carried away and wasn't paying attention. Um, so I have a little bit more slack to tie it tighter, I think, if I wanted to. But that's it. I think it's very, very pretty. Um, I am really, I really love it in terms of, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful things I think I've knit. It's very well written, as I've said. Um, I have been a little bit sensitive about wearing it, only because I feel like it emphasizes kind of the shapes of my body that I don't really like. And I'm just, you know, I'm trying so hard 
not to let that kind of mentality get the best of me. A lot of the time, you know, I'll knit something and think it is just gorgeous as it is. But then when I put it on, I feel very self-conscious. And it's because, I don't know, I think it's because I struggle with these things. So I'm just trying to embrace it and appreciate it and enjoy it. And again, not let that get the best of me. But I think as time goes on and um, it's like the more I see it on myself, I think the more I'll enjoy it. So that's my other finished knitted object. So now I'm going to talk about my works in progress. And I'll start with the knitting, but then I do have a few other kinds of crafts. So the first one I'll show is just something simple. And that is a sock. <laughs> so I, I wasn't planning on knitting this sock up, but uh, my best friend Kira invited me out to see a movie with a couple of her girlfriends. And I was very excited to go because since I have a toddler, um, I don't get to go out and do things like very, it's very rare that I get to go out and do anything. So I was excited for the invitation and my husband uh, stayed home and, you know, it was just the two of them. I got to go to the movies, which I haven't done, I think, since I was pregnant. Um, so, of course, I needed some movie knitting. And I have I had I have a couple of the Knit Picks Felici balls in my yarn stash that I've had for probably a year. Um, so this is one of them. This colorway is called Mango Lossy. And so I cast it on that morning. We went on a Tuesday. I cast it on on a Tuesday morning. And then I think I did the ribbing and I started the stockinette. No. <laughs> so I, I did this much of the ribbing, these first two stripes before the movie. And then during the movie, I did this last stripe. And this is where I impressed myself. I switched to stockinette in the dark and <laughs> knit the entire leg of this. So I actually finished the leg in its entirety when the credits started to roll. I was very impressed with myself. Um, and so ever since then, I've just been kind of slowly working on the rest of the, the sock here. Um, we saw poor things, which was amazing. I went into it blind. I, I didn't know like what the movie even was. I just agreed to go. And if you're going to watch that movie, I recommend going into it with no idea what you're going to see. I also recommend not seeing it if you are sensitive and maybe don't see that movie with like your mom. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a lot. But anyway, so just a quick little sock project. Um, I did the heel turn and, and like the heel flap and gusset yesterday, I think. And I've just worked a little bit on the foot. I'm in the decrease section for my foot here. And yeah, I'm just going to work on this kind of as it's like my bag knitting. So if I happen to have time to pull it out of my bag, if I'm stopped somewhere, I'm just kind of working on it slowly. And I have actually already cast on the second sock because I had another little social event and I thought I might get the chance to knit, but my daughter was with me. So I did not. I only have the cast on plus a couple of rows, um, but I will. I'm, I'm glad I cast it on. That way, this one won't sit by itself for a long time. <laughs> uh, but the colorway is really pretty. I actually don't know if I'm going to keep this or gift it. Um, I bought this because it was one of the Knit Pig sales. And again, this was like a year or more ago. And you get Felici, which I think they don't even make anymore. I don't know. Um, but it, it's 50 gram balls, so like one per sock. And I bought two. They were like $2 or so. So the colorways to me didn't matter so much. I figured either I would end up wearing it or I'll gift it. And I like the colors. I think what's getting me is the green. If it was pink instead, I think I would like it more. Um, I love green, but just in the combination with the rest of the things, I'm not sure about it. So I'm going to knit it and then see if I want it or not. And I am doing a contrast heel and I'll probably do a contrast toe as well. This is leftovers now from two projects. I still have a lot of this yarn. This is the Stress Knits favorite in Eucalyptus, which I used as, I used to make a love note sweater and I used it as my contrast color in my Polina pullover here recently. And I still have enough for all these little contrasts. So that's what's my, what ended up as my heel. Um, this is a vanilla sock, but if you need a good vanilla sock pattern. The one that I refer to is the Bull and Vine favorite socks 
pattern and I'll have that linked below. My stitch markers are really cute. My friend recently gifted me, um, I'll show it later, but she gifted me a Firefly Notes mushroom tin with a bunch of mushroom stitch markers. So um, they're already on some projects. It's getting warm. <laughs> so my next uh, work in progress for knitting is a test knit for Hohi Locatelli. And I'm very thrilled to be testing a pattern for Hohi. She is an absolute sweetheart, I can tell, um, in all that she does. And I've test knit now for quite a few designers, from, you know, of, of an array of like small designers to, I mean, obviously big designers, Hohi Locatelli. I have to say her approach to test knitting, I think is really sweet. Um, she has sent out this very gracious email and just kind of said that, you know, life happens and if you can't fulfill this test for whatever reason, just drop no problem. It's all good. And she's just very sweet about it. Um, I'm not intending to do that, but if I needed to, I wouldn't feel the pressure because again, she's just very kind. But this top is called the Adriata top, and it is similar to what I'm wearing in the sense that it is a sleeveless um, tank top kind of pattern, and it has lace. Um, it's kind of hard to show because I haven't done too much yet. Um, honestly, this, this will go pretty quickly once I pick it up and finish the front portion, because I've already finished the back. But for whatever reason, I just haven't been drawn to this. And I think it's because it's not wool. My hands, it's fine, it's nice, it's lovely, but I just enjoy the feeling of knitting with wool. Um, but this one features a lace pa a band that goes around the arms, both of the arms. So instead of something like this, the central lace pattern in the body, it goes around the arms and then down the side. So it's very pretty. And I picked a neutral color. Um, so I'm actually making this for myself, but also as a sample for the shop because this yarn is something I carry here in my shop. It is this Erica Knight Studio Linen, and it is a 85% recycled linen and 15% linen premium, so it's like a new linen, but it's mostly a recycled linen, which I really appreciate. And I currently have three colorways in stock. This one is the more like beigey neutral one out of all of them. I think the color is 402, which I can't remember what that is. Otherwise, it might just be 402, but it's pretty little beige with kind of a gray undertone. But anyway, I picked this color so that the lace pattern, I think, would come through the best. And it looks very pretty. It's almost like this wrapping leaf motif. And I, I do think it's lovely. So I am excited to get this one complete and to wear it. With this one being linen, I think it'll be perfect for the springtime. I love the way that she styled her sample photo, which is with a skirt similar to the one I'm wearing today. So I'll probably do the same, but it's very pretty. So that, that's the back and the front, um, as I mentioned, I just joined. So the knitting process of this one, I think is what has held me up a little bit. I have until I think the last day of February to finish this test knit. And I started it at the end of January, I think, but the process is a little bit, um, it's easy, but it's, it's a lot of going back and forth between this left leaning chart and a right leaning chart, right side, wrong side, flat, in the round. It's just kind of managing like which row you're on and which section. And um, I use Knit Companion, which makes it easy to kind of track my progress. So no problem there, but it is just a little bit more like I need to sit down with the mentality of being active with the pattern. But I've kind of gotten past the sort of tricky part where you actually had to knit like the back left side uh, and then put those stitches on hold and then do the back right side, put them on hold, front and you know, so on and so on. And then you end up joining and knitting back and forth to a certain length. And then now I'm doing that with the front. And then once this front is long enough, it'll join in the round for, you know, that'll create the armhole. And then I'll just go around and round in the body. And that part will be really easy. And I think the only finishing edge that I'll have to do is the neck, maybe something with the armhole, but yeah. So this one is, it's on its way. Since it's a short sleeve top, this is actually a good, a pretty good percentage of being complete. But I will say this linen is very, very nice. Um, 
it's very comfortable to knit with and it feels good. I can tell that this is going to be a very cooling top in the warm weather. So I'm looking forward to having this. So the last knitting work in progress that I will show is another new cast on. Um, all of these were new cast ons since I last spoke with you guys because I just, I tend to not start a lot of things that I don't finish very quickly. I, I get very dedicated to each project. Um, the only thing that I'm still knitting that I haven't finished is my Stephen West MCAL. I, I tend to, uh, you know, each, this is my third year, and what I do with them is I work on them extensively, and then I kind of put them away for a few months and return to them. So that's my plan. I do want to finish that one soon, um, before the springtime, because it's a lot of bright pinks, and I think it'll be fun for the spring. But this project is really, really fun. Trying to get this held up correctly. So this is a kind of a dream make. I was hoping to make one of these this year. This is called Cloud Bow by Reed Keys, and it is from a Pom Pom magazine. I can't remember which issue, but I'll have this pattern linked below in Ravelry. And I believe you can only buy it in the Pom Pom, Pom, Pom magazine. And since they're going out of business, the magazines are 50% off, I believe, still. That's where, like, when I bought this book was when it went on sale. So you might still be able to get the pattern book. And this particular book is full of these really dreamy mohair projects. It has an Amy Schur, like the, I think the effervescent pullover pattern in it and a lot of other good ones, um, a Pope Vergara pattern. So, and a Marcena Kolacek actually. Anyway, it's my favorite pom-pom and I recommend it. But this is Cloud Bow and the yarn is called Scranton What by Treehouse Knits. This was from the Office Collection. It is a white base with very subtle pops of neon. So there's neon yellow and pink and orange and then black speckles. And since I'm just holding the mohair single, I think the fabric, unfortunately with the lighting, I think it's a little bit hard to tell, but you can kind of see all of those little radiant neon pops that are in the fabric. Depending on wearing this over a camisole, probably something handmade, either like black or neon pink. We'll see. Um, so the construction for this pullover is pretty fun. You start by knitting two rectangles. It's these. It's the front and back panel here, and you knit it to the, the dimensions, and then you actually pick up along the sides of the rectangles to start the sleeve. You knit back and forth a little bit for a sleeve cap before joining in the round. And then you knit the entire sleeve to the length. Um, and then you, here in the cuff, I did hold an undyed strand of merino nylon fingering with the mohair to give a little bit of strength to the rolled cuff. So this is not I cord, although you could do I cord, but it's just a knitted length. Um, you knit double the length of how you want your rolled cuff to be. And then I used the technique where you knit you knit down with a picked up stitch from the cast on edge um, to kind of create that rolled hem. I used that technique um, on some previous necklines that I've talked about in prior episodes. So yeah, this is basically knit sleeve to sleeve. So at this point I'm on the second sleeve. Sorry, you can probably hear my needles hitting one another, try to hold them. Um, I'm knitting the second sleeve. I just joined in the round and I probably have another 15 inches or so to go before I start the um, little stockinette cuff. But it's fun. It's not the most comfortable knit, if I'm honest, because it's this lace weight yarn with giant needles. And I like knitting with small needles, but these are a US um, 10 and a half, which is a 6.5 millimeter. So you're trying you know, to keep these really thin strands going on this um, large gauge needle. So for me, it's it's like it knits up quickly, but it's not the most comfortable. So then I don't really want to work on it too, too much. But I think once I'm past the sleeves and in the body, I'll enjoy it more. Um, the body's cute. It's going to be picked up around these little um, rectangles and it'll have this voluminous peplum style blouse effect. And um, I think this is what I'm going to wear to the Stardew Valley concert in July. It's like a little bit elegant, but with a touch of the whimsy. And I think it's really pretty. Um, 
The only other thing I can say about this is I had two skeins of my lace mohair. I'm still on skein number one and I have enough for the sleeve. So I'll have, I think this is enough for the rest of the sleeve. So I'll have a full skein for the peplum. So no worried, uh, no worried, no worries about the yardage that I have. But I will say the second skein is a lot more colorful. I think it, it just got a lot more of the dye. And I kind of wish that I would have used that for the top portion so that more of that color would have been closer to my face and higher up. And then because the, in the peplum where it gets roughly, you kind of don't see the fabric quite as detailed as you do here where it lays more flat. So I, I only wish that I would have used the more colorful skein for the top portion. But I'm not ripping this out. So we're just going with it. It is very pretty, the fabric. Hopefully the color's coming through okay. So that's it for my knitted works in progress. So I'm going to continue from here, but sadly I finished recording my whole video, which was um, about 50 more minutes of footage. And I realized my microphone died, which is very devastating because I feel like I really did a kind of a good job with what I was trying to say. And I just lost all of that because of the audio. So I'm having to move forward right now uh, without the microphone. It's charging. I hope the sound is okay. I do apologize. I'm going to try to project um, so that I'm louder than the lights and ambient sounds. Um, and once my microphone has charged a little bit, I will grab that. Um, so yeah, I gosh, I cannot believe I just lost all of that footage. But um, I got through my knitting and so I was moving on to spinning and my other project. So let's go ahead and talk about spinning and I hope that I don't forget anything. I have one current like active spinning project and it is this beautiful fiber that Tammy of Cinematic Skeins sent to me. And this is a Merino custom blend. I do believe that it is a Merino silk blend. I checked the website for this fiber dyer and I can't remember their name. It's not somebody I was familiar with before Tammy sent this to me. Um, I couldn't find more details on this, but I do believe it has silk because the yellow is very shiny. See the way it's catching the light? And I have uh, spun a wool silk blend before and I it was very shiny like this and this feels similar. So I think it has a wool silk blend. Um, so this is the second half of the fiber. I already spun up the first half. I have a shocked ladybug wheel and I love it. It's beautiful. I think it spins lovely yarn. Um, and this is a 3D printed bobbin that I got from a local seller. And this is my first uh, half of the spin. So I think it's very lovely. I'm trying to make sure it catches everything well there. I'm spinning this as fine as I can. And I think the yarn looks pretty even. So I'm, I'm pleased with it. I am just spinning this end to end versus something like a fractal spin, which is what I've done pretty regularly so far. So this one was my other uh, my other most recent finished spin and it is a fractal like two ply spin. It's a Coriadale yarn. I believe that I showed this or Coriadale fiber. I believe I showed this skein the last time I recorded. I don't remember, but I figured I would just show it briefly here. Um, it's there's a couple of those little like pigtail um, things sticking out, but overall I think it's a pretty nice yarn. And so this would be an example of like a two ply fractal spin. And then this one is I'm spinning it end to end because the fibers, the lengths of fiber all seem to be pretty uniformly dyed. So or um, I think, you know, all of these fibers must have been dyed and then blended together. So there's no point, in my opinion, of doing like a fractal spin because it's kind of, you know, you got this end to end colorway versus something like hand dyed yarn which is different colors in different places there's other ways i could have spun this but i'm just doing the end to end and then i'm going to ply it at the end and i expect i'll probably get a worsted weight yarn because this is looking between like a, a fingering and sport on its own so i think plied it'll give me something worsted and i don't know what i'll do with this but i think it's going to be very pretty um yeah i'm looking forward to this one and my lovely friend, Brooke, who owns Biddy Knits, she asked me to talk a little bit about my spinning journey. Oh, this is hard recording this again since I just finished recording this whole segment, but 
I, I'm going to go a little bit over that. Um, I started with a drop spindle in 2021. I went to Rhinebeck to New York Ship and Wool and I got a gorgeous drop spindle. It's kind of like this color actually. And it's like a resin acrylic kind of spindle and it's very pretty. So I did spin up a skein of yarn on that one. It's a very hideous skein of yarn, but I do still have it. Um, and then I didn't, I didn't spin anything else. I didn't spin anything else after that. Um, when I was at New York Sheep and Wool that year, I also got to sit down and try out an e-spinner, which I really loved. And I was planning on buying one then and there, but their card machine went down. So I didn't have cash. I didn't end up getting one. And all in all, I'm kind of glad that I didn't because I really love my wheel. I think if I had purchased an e-wheel, I probably wouldn't have purchased like an actual full-sized wheel. And so I'm glad I waited. I love my ladybug. So um, I ordered my ladybug, I think in June of last year of 2023, and it was made to order. So I did have to wait a couple of months to receive it. Um, I'm kind of glad that it worked out that way because it's quite a big purchase and I was able to pay in four installments. So I paid for it um, in four installments and I had it paid off by the time it arrived. So, you know, it felt good to just have that paid for and then I could just enjoy it. So I have loved it so much ever since. And I am a self-taught spinner. So I, before ever getting my wheel or deciding that I would get a wheel, I was already doing research into spinning. So watching YouTube videos, reading articles and blog posts, as well as attending Fiber Guild, like Birmingham Fiber Guild events where spinners were present and they were doing demonstrations and you could ask them questions, um, just lovely resources of information. So I was already kind of doing my research and learning that way. Of course, nothing beats hands-on experience, but that was kind of my prep for learning or teaching myself to spin. And ever since then, I've just tried stuff out. So every time I spin, you know, I'm, I try to adjust like the rotation and um, the how fine the yarn is, what kind of spin I'm going to do, and really getting to understand like the lexicon, the vocabulary of spinning so that I know and I can speak on what I'm making and then you know how that yarn might behave later on. Um, so it's just a lot of trial and error. That's the method that I like. I have not taken an actual class or sat down with an experienced spinner with my wheel and had them show me anything. Um, but I think all of those are good places to start. And you know, if you're interested in spinning, maybe you can see if your local, if your town or like the local big town to you maybe has a spinning guild, a fiber guild, because more often than not, you're probably going to find spinners that way. And so like, you know, for example, Birmingham, Alabama has a really big, awesome fiber guild with all kinds of fiber artists, you know, weavers, knitters, crocheters, spinners, you name it. And so they are a good resource. If I needed one, they do a spinning study, I think every week or every couple of weeks. So I could attend that if I wanted to. And um, so yeah, something to keep in mind, check Craigslist for maybe a wheel near you. Just do a little research on what you're buying. And um, But the fiber guilds I think are a great starting place if you want to learn. And so that's a little bit about my spinning journey, if you want to call it that. I've been loving it very much. I do love to spin. It takes up a lot of my time, but it's a mindful practice. So whereas knitting, I can really get wrapped up in like an audiobook or watching a podcast or a show, and I don't really think about what I'm doing too much. Spinning is different. Um, spinning helps me to take a deep breath and kind of clear my mind in ways that knitting doesn't do that for me because knitting, it's like knitting is this natural extension of myself and it, it feels like, it just feels like me in my everyday. I don't know how to explain it. I'm sure you get it. Um, I think we all have that thing, but spinning helps me to, like I said, clear my mind, really be mindful and consider what I'm doing. It helps me to think through things. So if I'm experiencing something like difficult or emotional or even joyful, it helps me to be mentally present so that I can give that my full attention. Um, yeah, I, I think it's really helpful that way. So I just love it. I recommend spinning for sure. Okay. 
The next craft I wanted to talk about is quilting because I have been making um, a beautiful quilt, if I do say so myself. So I've made three quilts prior in my short-lived quilting career. They've all been for my daughter. The first two were crib-sized stripy quilts. And then for the third quilt, I did Adventureland by Suzy Quilts, which is a throw-sized blanket that utilizes jelly rolls. And for this throw-sized quilt, which is for myself, it's 54 by 54 inches. And uh, it's also a jelly roll sized or jelly roll featuring quilt. It's called Jelly Rainbow by Moda Fabrics, I think, and it's a free quilt design. And they offered this as a quilt along pattern, I think in 2021. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. So there was a fabric collection by Ruby Star Society called Firefly. I wanted to be able to use all of the fabrics, so I bought a um, I bought a jelly roll and paired it with this pattern. And I really love it. So I will insert some photos that give you like an aerial shot of the quilt because holding it up here, you're not going to see the whole thing. But I do think that the photos don't do justice to the colors, like the vibrancy and richness of the colors here and some of the really cute close-up details. So there's all these beautiful mushrooms. There's fireflies, of course. We've got owls tucked in there and you know tulips, moons, there's some metallic bits, and just beautiful, there's moths. Um, so right now I have my quilt sandwich and it's partially quilted, I've started in one corner, the rest of it is spray basted or pin basted together, but I, I do have a little quilt sandwich going on. Um, I'm just quilting in the ditch, but I'm doing it like an eighth of an inch outside of the seam, so whereas I'll have the seam running here. I'm going on both sides of each seam and doing about an eighth of an inch um, external uh, quilting here. So just straight lines. I like the way that's looking on the back. And I did pre-wash my backing fabric, but not my quilt top because the jelly rolls, I didn't want them to fray. And um, my batting is an 80-20 cotton wool blend. So I'm excited to try out like the wool batting. I've only had cotton so far. And I think the wool is going to add some extra loft and warmth. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that behaves as I continue to quilt it and wash it and use it. It's very beautiful. And my backing fabric is this. It was my favorite fabric in the collection. This hot pink and hot orange um, combination and it's tulips. And I love this side so much. I would be happy if this was just the whole blanket. So that's my quilt progress. I finished the quilt top in I think two days. Um, since I didn't have to cut the jelly roll strips, they were, you know, pre-pieced for me. That made piecing everything really easy. It was kind of like doing these strip blocks um, and then cutting those sort of like half square triangles, I think, and then piecing like one of the triangles with another triangle, piecing those together. And that's how you'd end up with like these contrasted, like you've got the stripes going this way, the stripes going that way. I think you can get what I mean. Um, and then you've got your big quilt blocks, which were each of these, you've got 12 of these. And you just have to line them up according to the color instructions for the pattern to make sure you end up with these beautiful geometry like the these here and mine are definitely not perfect i will never strive for perfection in a quilt in a project bag absolutely i'm going to do my best to make that as perfect as possible but a quilt no sir <laughs> i do not have the mental or physical time and capacity to worry about that. Um, I'm sure the more I do it, the more naturally better I will get at it. Um, so I'm not saying I'm resistant to practice and getting better, but I'm not going to fuss. I'm not going to rip out. You know, if my, my little triangles don't meet, meet perfectly, that's fine. <laughs> and from a distance, you can't even tell. That's my quilt progress. Okay, I'm reunited with my microphone. I hope that the audio is better now and let's Let's both hope that I keep an eye on the little bar there that tells me that it's still recording so that I don't lose sound again. Okay, my next craft, my new craft, 
is cross stitch. I'm really excited. I apparently absolutely adore cross stitch. I cannot put it down. Um, it's captured almost all of my attention this past week. In fact, I kind of had to force myself to finish my oolong tank, which I'm so glad I did. And knitting will always be my true love. But right now, cross stitch is like that new exciting thing. So I love it. I'm keeping my project in this bag that I got recently. I showed this to you guys last time. It's gorgeous. It's made in Alabama. It's a knitting project bag, but right now it's holding all of my cross stitch since I don't have one of those fancy cross stitch project bags. Um, this is very beautiful and it matches my project. So the cross stitch pattern that I'm doing is called Egg Hunt and it's by Jody Rice for Satsuma Street. And I picked it just because I liked the pink rabbits and like the hot reddish orange birds. Um, so that's why I chose this pattern. I'm not intending on framing it like an egg or anything. I just liked the design. Um, so I'm pretty well on my way with this. I love cross stitch charts. They're really cool. I'm, I'm just going to like quickly just kind of show you like an overview. Um, but it's fun and it's much simpler to understand and read than I kind of expected. But I did a lot of research on cross stitch before I picked anything out so that way that way I knew what I was getting myself into. And here is my progress so far. So all of my DMC all of my floss are in this bag on bobbins. I'm using a Q-snap uh, frame for now with this project at least. I have a project coming up where I'm going to use black Ada. That's exciting. So first I have to say all of the little accessories that come with picking up a new craft is so fun, like the accoutrement, if you will. Um, I have these little needle minders that I found on Etsy and they're so cute. Um, so I wanted to show those real quick. They came from the same seller, but this one, and this this is on my fabric, but I took it off to show the project, but it's like a little calcifer from Howl's Moving Castle. And it's just so cute. Um, and then this one, I will put this on my next project. It's a soot sprite and it says, finish what you started human um, from Spirited Away. So I love both of these. And here is my project. It's so pretty. So I have made quite a bit of progress. I just started this last weekend, I think. Um, and with this being my first ever attempt at cross stitch, I feel pretty good about it. Um, so I'm using a cloth that even though I purchased this kitted up, I did purchase uh, my cloth separately. So this is sampled on a piece of hand dyed like forest green linen. It's beautiful. I considered getting it, but it was pretty expensive, understandably so. But for my first project, I thought, let me not jump all in and spend all the money. I will just get something comparable. And actually, I think this was even better for me. Um, Although they're, one of the flosses is like the identical color, so it blends in a little bit. But this one is, this is from Stitched Modern. Everything I bought for cross stitch is, um, it, this is 14 count Ada called Riviera Olive. I think the colorway is beautiful. It's like that gorgeous chartreuse color. And as you can see, it's much bigger than I need for my project. I didn't want to go ahead and trim it up or anything since I wasn't really sure what kind of space, even though it gives you dimensions in the pattern, I wasn't sure visually what to expect. So I left everything, but I will trim this and utilize this fabric for other projects in the future. Um, and I look forward to framing this. I feel like I don't really have that much more to go. There's a lot of little details, but I, this is, I went ahead and did the final row. So I know about how long or how it's going to stop here. And I still have like, maybe a big bird and a heart to do up here. Um, so I've still got plenty of space for that, but this is going to be beautiful and I cannot wait to frame this and put it on, I think my bedside. I think I'm going to treat myself and decorate my bedroom with it so I can see it all the time. Um, I just can't wait, but it is absolutely lovely. I love how painterly this design is. Um, cross stitch is so cool and it's very traditional. There's tons of types of pattern, Patterns and I have gone very much down the rabbit hole with looking at cross stitch patterns and just kind of longing over what I am going to make in my lifetime. Just 
I'm so excited. I love it very much. Um, but I really am drawn to these very modern painterly patterns. In fact, this one I think has a bit of like a Scandinavian design. Um, it seems to me like this would be kind of like a Scandinavian design, but the colors are very modern. And this is just what I'm interested in, I think, right now. So more of this modern style, um, just beautiful. I can't stop looking at it. It's this, it's like I'm, I step back and I'm like, oh, I made this. It's so great. So I have lots of cross stitching plans. I hope that you guys don't mind. I'm not going to start some kind of separate floss tube because knitting is my main love and that's not going to change. So I don't think I need a whole separate dedicated space, but I hope you don't mind me sharing my cross stitch progress here and there. I do have another kit that I've gone ahead and purchased at the same time. I'm looking forward to making this one. I love rabbits. So of course it's another rabbit pattern. This one is called the Jack Rabbit by Cottage Garden Samplings. It's very pretty. Sorry for the glare. It's very lovely. You've got this giant rabbit and then a tiny house and some flowers. And you can see in the sample photo that looks like probably some hand dyed linen, but it has kind of that antique look to it. And that's what I don't really like about cross stitch. Um, and, you know, I love like cottage core. I love that homey vintage aesthetic. That's what I want to curate in my home, except for something about with cross stitch. It's not my favorite. Um, I think I'll probably learn to love it. Or if it was like that green, it'd be more me, but this color, not so much. So in this kit, they sent this Celadon colored 14 count Ada, and it's that lovely sea green blue kind of color. So I think this will be a better option for my personal taste. And then the, the palette, the color palette for the rabbit is really pretty. So I am looking forward to stitching this one. It'll be a lot different from this other one I'm working on. And then I have one, I've got one more that I have the floss for and the black Ada already. And it's a little chicken. So I'm very excited about that. My husband and I have pet chickens. And um, this past week, actually, we had a really sad event where a dog killed one of our chickens and not, our, not one of our dogs, um, but we were pretty devastated. Our neighbors behind us allowed their dogs to destroy their fence partially and one of the dogs got in when we weren't home and yeah it was very sad um thankfully the other two are okay they're a little shaken up but otherwise they're okay but yeah one of our chickens we were, we were pretty devastated so i'm going to stitch this little chicken um just because I, I love chickens but also it's like a sweet little memory of her i think so i'm looking forward to that and i have lots of plans lots lots and lots of plans I found like a frog and toad cross stitch pattern. There's these beautiful moth cross stitch patterns. I just am going to try all the things. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit now about the things that I recently purchased. Um, so up first, and this is out of, of course, aside from the cross stitch, that's all new to my life. But uh, in terms of yarn, I did get these two skeins of yarn. They are gorgeous. This is Malabrigo Susuro, and it is a DK or light sport weight yarn. It is 50% mulberry silk, and I think 25% merino wool and 25% linen. So it has that beautiful luster to it. The color is extremely vibrant. It has a nice cooling touch. I can tell there's lots of drape in this yarn, and the colorway is Frank's Ochre. It's Stunning, right? It's very vibrant. I think it'll be pretty with me since I've embraced my natural hair color these past few years. I stopped dyeing my hair like red and black and pink and all the things. Um, I think the yellow will be suitable for me and my blue eyes. I think it'll be a pretty color for me. Um, I'm going to do something that maybe some of you will groan at, but I'm going to knit my first ranunculus. Um, I've yet to knit one, but as I mentioned earlier, my goal for the year is to make more blouse style tops and especially things that I can wear year round um, since we have mostly hot days here in Alabama. So I, I actually came across a channel, I think it's called Nora's Knits or Nora Knits, something like that. And she knit a ranunculus out of this exact yarn. So I totally got this idea from her. But I just thought that it was gorgeous. The shine on it is really impressive, but 
seeing hers knit up, I could tell that it drapes beautifully and it looks comfortable to wear. So I'm looking forward to making one of those. I'm going to make a long sleeve version with these two skeins of yarn. I think it'll be enough. I'm hoping. Um, if not, I can get one more skein, but I think it, I think the two will do the trick. But I'm going to go ahead and cast this on uh, very soon because I think it'll be a gorgeous spring top. I got one more skein of yarn, and this is from the lovely Kim of Oakwood Knits, who is the very fabulous sock designer that we all know and love. She is the designer behind the Stardew Valley sock patterns and the Zelda patterns, um, and she's got quite a few other really cute sock patterns, um, but I've been knitting all of her Stardew Valley socks. I need to return to that. Um, but she also is extremely talented with yarn dyeing. Um, she just started doing an Animal Crossing monthly yarn club, and each month the colorway is based off of um, one of the characters. So for February, she did Isabel, super cute character. Um, this embodies that character very well. And I went ahead and purchased a skein of her soft sock base. So this is 8515 Superwash Extra Fine Merino and 15% Nylon. I am going to knit my daughter an adorable raglan sweater with this. So when I was thinking about buying this, I considered making my first pair of DK weight socks, but I just think this is too cute to not be a sweater for my little one. So next year, I'm gonna go ahead and make it soon just so it's prepared. But for next winter, when she's going to be two and a half, um, I don't have any hand knits that will fit that size. So this is going to become her next little sweater. And maybe I'll get it done soon enough that she'll get to um, wear it a little bit this spring, even though it'll be oversized. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I am looking forward to making this. And um, I would have liked something for myself out of this because it's so cute, but it will be way cuter on her. And I'm going to pair it with a leftover DK weight skein that I have from Lambstrings. It's the Lace Wing colorway. It's similar to this beautiful minty blue color. And I'm going to use that one for the contrast stripes in this pattern that I've picked out. And yeah, I'm just, I think it's going to be super cute. So um, Kim, you're awesome. And thank you for opening the club back open, for, back up for me. Um, she was selling the club the week that my phone was uh, broken by my little one. The week that my little one uh, broke my phone. <laughs> so I missed the club because I was disconnected, which was honestly wonderful. But I was disconnected for a full week and I missed the club. And Kim was very sweet and opened it back up for me so that I could purchase this game. So thank you, Kim. And now I have this. So speaking of clubs, I have one more to show. This is the Nest Fiber Club. And I purchased this back in December, I believe. So this would be the January Club. And it just arrived um, at the end of January. And it's lovely. So I've already paid for February so that I'll get the February's Club. But I think after that, I'm going to put a pause since my friend Marquita sent me two months worth of the clubs from last year. So this is now I have three fibers from Nest Fiber Club and a fourth on the way at the end of the month. I think I'll go ahead and pause it and just spin through some of this. And then if I like it, which I do so far, I'll rejoin. Um, but this is gorgeous. So this is called Psyche or Psyche, Psyche. And it is Cormo, which is exciting because I've yet to spin Cormo. And I'm sorry it's in the bag, but I want to keep it protected. I'm trying to not jostle it. Um, but I'm sorry for the glare. I think the color is gorgeous. There's reddish orange and peach and violet, lilac, blue. It's very pretty. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to spinning this, but mostly because this Cormo has a lovely feeling, lovely texture. And I think it's going to be like a very lofty kind of spin. So I'm looking forward to this very much. So lastly, I got a bag from Amy Beth of Fat Squirrel Fibers. It's so cute. I love the fabrics that she picks. It's a gigantic bag. Um, this is the only size she offered, which makes sense because the print is huge. But it's all kinds of whimsical little houses. So there's a mushroom house, a teapot house. There's a couple of hobbit homes, hobbit holes. So this one and that one were different. There's a little cottage, and then there's all kinds of little critters, like a fox with her babies, and just all kinds of little cute critters. 
I love this bag. I love the little wrist handles that she includes too. So very excited. Um, this could hold a giant project. I'm thinking about, well, I'm going to knit this particular blanket pattern. It's called Maximalist by, I think it's Uki or Yuki Knits, I believe. U-K-E-E. -E. It's a beautiful pattern. I'm going to dial the yarn for it pretty soon and get started. So I think this will be my blanket project bag. I have to say, I just admire Amy Beth, Fat Squirrel Fibers, so, so much. Every time she puts a video up, she brings something enlightening to the table with her discussion and how clearly she is, she's just such a deep thinker and a thoughtful person. Um, she presents topics that I've either never considered or never knew how to express myself. And she really helps me to wrap my head around some of these big ideas. Um, like her most recent video, she did a whole little discussion about the way that we talk about bodies that I thought was really important. Um, her framing of that discussion and her perspective, it really helped me to feel like, okay, this is a person who is putting it into words that I myself lacked, but now it resonates with me. And I've already shared with multiple people her perspective and, you know, par I'm paraphrasing, she does a much better job at expressing herself. But I say, if you somehow have not watched her videos, you should go check out Fat Squirrel Fibers because um, of course there's knitting and there's quilting and other beautiful projects. She's always up to something, but it's just the way that she thinks about things. It's really, it's really wonderful to hear a perspective of somebody who deeply considers such a variety of topics. Anyway, that's my recommendation, my podcast recommendation, one of my favorites. And that's all that I have to show for my crafts and what I've been buying. Um, so hopefully this next little part will come across well because um, so my microphone died and I just recorded this talk. And then last episode when I recorded, I also recorded this talk and that footage got corrupted. So here's hoping it doesn't happen a third time. But I just wanted to talk about gratitude, privilege, um, just appreciating my circumstances in life, but also talking a little bit about finding joy and just sharing a little bit of insight on like me and the way that my outlook is. And so I'll get into it. I recently, um, I had Natalie of Nitty Natty come and record a studio, like a, a shop tour of of paper crane yarns and that video will be up on Tuesday which is very exciting and her doing so her coming here kind of helped to spur this thing I've been thinking about because I mean obviously her coming and sharing a video of my little you know my humble tiny but mighty shop is very helpful I think and we'll see you know what what kind of if it really does bring my business to light for anybody who maybe otherwise wouldn't have heard of me. But regardless, just the opportunity to kind of be spotlighted and to talk about my business was very amazing. And um, I'm just very grateful for that opportunity. But I will say that something um, that something that's been on my mind is just wanting to make sure that I am transparent about what it's like to own a business because clearly this little world that I have built for myself and that my husband has helped me build and my parents and my husband's parents and his family, everybody who has played a role um, in building up this shop and making sure that it's this happy place and, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. I just, it, I literally couldn't do this without them. And I just want to point out that this is to me the definition of a glamorous life, but I don't want social media to be deceiving. I know that there are some yarn dyers or other small business owners who just seem to have such an amazing, you know, this and that, and they're so successful and, you know, we're so happy for them. It's true. I am. I'm such a big supporter. I want these people to do well, but I want to just maybe demystify the fact that like me as a small business owner, personally, even though to me it's glamorous and wonderful and I would not trade it for anything, I'm not getting rich off of owning a yarn shop. I, um, just for some perspective, 2023, I did double sales over 2022, which was amazing, like almost to a dot. 
sales doubled, which was really cool because, you know, we did our, our shop expansion. We invested a lot. And by a lot, I mean every single cent that I made in the business last year. I don't have that money. I invested that in the business. So I don't take a paycheck from the shop. Um, if anything, I buy yarn and stuff here and there. And that is like my little treat. But this does not financially support my family. I have a second job. I and you guys, I'm, I've talked about this before. So you probably know this, but I have a work from home job. And it's only 16 hours a week. It's very easy. Well, depending on the season, it's, it's easy. Um, but it's Tuesday through Friday, I only work one hour in the morning, super early, I send some emails before I come to my shop. But on Mondays, my shop is closed because from 5 a.m. until 5 p.m. I'm logged in. I am a remote administrative director for a company that provides accessibility services. So we work with people with certain disabilities um, and I enjoy that very much. I feel very privileged that I get a chance to not only work from home, but the type of services that we provide, I feel like it's important that I'm able to help orchestrate these services for people with disabilities. So I love that job. And that's what helps me to support my family and pay bills. Um, the shop is just a beautiful, wonderful place that I get to come every day and focus on building up myself as a person more, more than anything. And more importantly, I get to spend every day with my daughter. So that is where I'm talking about privilege. I understand a lot of people do not have that opportunity. Some people don't want that. Some people do want to send their kid to daycare or whatever. And whatever your choice is, that's a good choice for your family. Um, for me, that was something I very much did not want to do. I didn't want to send my daughter to daycare. And so that is why I'm extremely privileged to be in this position because I don't have to. My daughter comes with me every day. And the important thing is my business does not take away from our family. So I make more than enough money at the business to for it to sustain itself and to grow. And now that we're done with the expansion and everything, I think in the coming year, we'll actually start to see some take home pay, like a paycheck, which is great news because you know it can be a little bit stressful to think of all the unpaid hours that go into building up this business. Anytime I'm on Instagram responding to messages about um, answering, you know, I do pattern help. People, customers will send me messages asking for pattern help. Um, people send me messages asking about needle sizes. I get lots of questions as a yarn store owner. I expect that I welcome that. I love that, but those are all unpaid hours. Um, it's a very low paying job. <laughs> now I don't want to come across as like, I'm saying, Oh, I pity me or anything. Do not. I have the most fabulous life. This is a wonderful job. I would not trade it for anything. The fact that I get to knit and play with yarn all day and I get to choose what I sell. I get to travel and sell and sell yarn. I get to have an open table and welcome people into my shop every day and just get to know the local crafters. We've built up such a lovely community. I feel like a lot of these like regulars that come are um, eternal friends. And I just have found so much joy. So this is not a complaint, but I just want to demystify that like maybe that glamorous idea of owning your uh, your small business it's it's tough and these small business owners that i know struggle i mean there are very high highs and very low lows and so i've taken to becoming friends i think with other small business owners because we can kind of um you can celebrate those things together and it's good to have that sounding board so i'm trying to be that sounding board too because i know a lot of people are interested in doing this work or want to start a business and i think that's great and you should try um yeah and just know there are there are options and there are resources but it's very important to consider why you're doing it and for me it is the endless joy that comes with it um i've spent the past five years or so and i ex i feel like i explained this so much better when i just recorded this before i spent the past five years or so really building myself up as a person i am somebody who has experienced a lot of trauma and a lot of darkness. Um, I really have struggled in my life with the situations I've been in, um, 
you know, abusive situations I've been in, just really bad uh, circumstances, terrible losses, losing my very best friend. I lost my first baby. I have been through a lot as we all have. And so these past five years, I feel like as a person, as a, a person in my community, um, a, a mother and a wife and a daughter, I feel like I've grown quite a bit as a person. And I think that the shop has given that to me in some ways. Um, not in every way. Don't get me wrong. Like, this isn't the end all be all. This isn't why I've become a better person. But it's really helped me because I feel like I, I have these goals. And honestly, the beautiful life that comes with um, contentment, I think, is important to recognize. So to me, the biggest change in my life, I think, over the past couple of years is learning to be content with what you have it does not mean that your heart cannot long or want you can and you should because you might not try if you don't have um a goal but just make sure that it's like a reasonable goal and ask yourself what is the root of this is it that you just want more you want things um because in my opinion those goals are not going to bring happiness or joy they're they're fun temporarily. I love to buy yard. It makes me feel good temporarily, but you know that's not going to resolve like a long standing issue. So <laughs> I feel like this is a bit of a silly conversation, but I just want to say that while my job is not life saving, it's arguably not important to me. It's everything because it gives me an outlet to be the kind of mother that I want to be, to be the kind of friend that I want to be. And it's really helped me, um, like we do, we do the shop out of pocket. So that means slow growth. That means um, can't always have what I want to offer in the shop. You know, I wanna bring in more hand-dyed yarn. That's what people want, but I can't afford other people's hand-dyed yarn. I wish I could, um, but I just have to be content with what I can offer and truly find the joy in that. And that to me is the best because when you can find contentment in something, I think there is, that is an incomparable feeling. Um, and like, you have to ask yourself, when is the last time I truly felt content? I think social media makes it really hard because, you know, thinking about even something like planning your next project, it's super exciting to want to cast on a new knitted project or like all of my cross stitch plans. That stuff is so exciting. It keeps you invigorated. You look forward to it. You can't wait to get to the next thing. But how often do we sit back and we just think, wow, I am so content in this moment. This project is everything I wanted it to be. And even when it's not, I can adjust that. I can make it so, or I don't even have to finish it. But seeking that contentment, and that's why I love gardening. Um, gardening is a slow reward, but it is one of the best. It's one of the biggest rewards in my opinion. It's so amazing to have this thing that has this um, this want, this desire to grow. You know, you take a seed. A lot of people think they can't garden. You just have to learn a little bit and be patient. But that seed wants to grow. That is what is so amazing about like gardening. You have this really humble little thing that wants to become something. And as far as it knows, you know, it's going to do everything that it can to become that thing. But you have to nurture it. And I just think that's beautiful. So. I think we can find similar concepts within ourselves and trust me, improving and finding contentment and maintaining that does not happen overnight. I still struggle. Sometimes I think like, I wish my house was a little bit bigger. I wish we had a third bedroom so that maybe we could feel comfortable if we wanted to have a second uh, child, a second child. We have a two bedroom house. It's a small little house and I couldn't imagine putting another person in there. So sometimes I think, I would love to grow our family, but I just don't think we have the space. And that's a big one, but being content, like I love my daughter and it's okay if that never happens. That's what helps me not to dwell. And so anyway, I hope that maybe some of those things help you. I just wanna express that I have, I'm so grateful and gracious over my life and I want to be humble over it, but I also wanna express that joy because I think no matter where we are in life, it's nobody is going to give us that happiness and that joy. That's something that honestly we can only find or we can only seek out. And um, 
if you find if there is a person in your life who who makes it their mission to give you that joy hang on to that person because that's amazing and that can be you know your spouse or a friend or a parent or a sibling um and for me i have a little bit of all of those things and so you want to make sure you treasure those things but you can't only rely on that for your happiness and your success <laughs> okay so hopefully I uh, made that point okay. I hope some of you enjoyed that little conversation. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, if you have any, uh, I'm just, I want to spread that joy because, and like that perspective. And again, let me reiterate, this is not a perfect cure to anything. I am not always perfect at maintaining these feelings within myself, but these are at least the feelings and the goals that I have in my day to day to make my life better, to make my husband's life happier and you know mo mo most importantly my daughter i want to raise her with this perspective and of course it's okay to be sad and it's okay to have days where you think wow none of this matters um i'm not content i'm upset nothing is going to make me feel better sometimes we have those days and that's okay but um yeah that's that's how i make my my overall goal is to aim for those things all the time so <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in today, and I hope that you enjoyed the uh, Natalie's store tour. That'll be up on Tuesday. I think that'll probably be up before this video, so I hope it's, you know, it comes across well, and I hope I wasn't too nervous in the video. I limited myself that day to one cup of coffee so that I wouldn't be too chaotic and jittery. Um, I haven't seen the video yet, so who knows, but I had fun making it, and having um, Natalie and Kent and Toaster here was such a treat. They were all very sweet. Toaster was absolutely adorable. Um, he was such a sweet little guy. I got to pet him and hang out with him a little bit. And we had such a fun day that day. All of the people who came to the shop to knit and meet Natalie, it was, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to spring and I hope you are. And don't forget to enter the Moon River giveaway. Just leave a comment down below that says Moon River, two words, and I will use that as like my search term when I am randomly drawing the winners. Okay, thank you for tuning in and um, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.
Chicken, what are you doing?